Welcome everyone to the final race of week three of the Dragon Warrior Randomizer Winter League. Uh, we have a great second uh, group race for you here. These are all runners who have won at least, I think, one race so far in the first two weeks. And uh, we've got the restream uh, with a race about to start now. So let me introduce you to our crew. We have Flower Power doing our restream today. We have RG365 and Shihali tracking. And I am here with Secret Agent Mand on comms. Mand, tell us a bit about our flags today. Uh, so this week we have the Chaos Flag set. Uh, that means several things. Number one, all enemies are going to be somewhat randomized a lot more than they are, uh, or usually are. Uh, their stats, their rewards, uh, even DL1 and DL2 can be randomized to varying degrees in terms of having a couple of different spells and DL2, uh, DL1 having a lot of different stats. And uh, it also means the weapon shop prices will also be randomized. So could be a lot of craziness and nobody knows what to expect and we have three treasure chests we can count on here in the throne room they're giving us a fighter's ring and two chests of gold so our runners have a little bit of money and two extra strength to go out and see if they can find a noodle or two and get some early experience and you'll definitely take all the strength you can get in a chaos seed because you never know how much you'll need it looks like they have 15 so that's that's pretty good to do damage to something. The question is, will it have enough? Uh, will it have enough HP uh, or not enough HP to live through 15 attack uh, 15 attack power? The treasury has a silver harp, which is always nice. You can trade that in the first chance you get. Uh, they're loading up on some herbs. Uh, and they have some more gold to grab to maybe find a shop and see what random prices are, are, are working out for them this race. It doesn't look like anyone really managed to set up a... Oh no wait, uh, it looks like Slamo managed to set up a gold grind. I don't know that anyone else did. Oh no wait, uh, Fry Teeth too. So that'll be good for them, could be an advantage. The dab has walked all the way around, uh, nothing interesting in that chest in the random position on the east side of the castle, but is now past the NPC and checking out the basement. First stop is the Jerk. Looks like Brick Area is right nearby and has a silver shield for 5k, so that's a really good really good price if you can uh, get a gold grind going early, and a couple of our racers did. Yeah, I don't know if I would reset for a gold grind, but I would be tempted just to get that silver shield defense out of the way. Yeah, it could definitely advantage Slamu early on, but it's chaos, so. Yeah, they have heal too, so that doesn't let you stretch out the fight. If you're fighting the noodle, it won't do more than about three damage to you. So if you see something that does three damage, uh, you can just sit there and fight it. The Magic Drakey, however, does 24 damage, so don't fight that yet. The dogs managed to get a kill, but there's not too many easy enemies to fight so far. Okay, uh, the Armored Knight is not the Noodle, because we've thrown two torches and it has still lived, so it has more than its uh, 5 HP. Uh, they're now in a little chip war, uh, but the Demon Knight might be the one that Beta Strump just got for 75. Yeah, and if it is, or even if it isn't, that's not a bad reward for a very close enemy that's pretty easy to kill. Ooh, and Fryteeth ran away from the Demon Knight. Really wants to get to that town, which I can respect. Let's see what you can get in that shop. See how you can get started. Don't lose any money yet. Looks like the Armored Knights are already running away from Beta, so that's fun. It looks like Slamu got uh, the Demon Knight as well. So on the board there with the 75 experience, which gives another well, 30 strength. So they're they're really ready to start grinding these early zones. Slamuth looking, thinking, you have the money, and gets the silver shield. So that's uh, the first silver shield purchase. Everyone else has the cheap large. 
which will definitely help, but we would like to be done with the Silver Shield buy early. Yeah, the only downside to that is there really aren't any weapons that were in there, except, you know, loading up on fairy water and counting that as a weapon instead. The beta strip kind of working the fairy water angle against that werewolf, but the werewolf was too strong and uh, sent beta strip home. So that's not the enemy yet either. The Dob throwing a fairy water at the Armored Knight, which is also not enough. So we still haven't seen the Armored Knight go down yet, but maybe with this fairy water fight we will. Oh, and it runs away, stealing two fairy water. What a, <laughs> what an investment. Looks like Slamu has found a pretty good grind over here at uh, Madra, uh, Madra Drakey's, I should say. Looks like they have 120, so that's a really good reward for them. Yeah, and a beta strep, I think, died really early to one, but maybe now that they're a little stronger... Uh, especially with that silver shield, you can outlast it and, and get that experience. Right Teeth getting the good news, it's three experience to level seven. You, you always like to know that next level isn't 2,000 away. Uh, it's very comforting to see that single-digit number from the gang. Though it always feels somewhat a disappointment they just didn't manage to grab three more experience while you're out there. Yeah, they have heal, hurt, and sleep, which is a really nice starting zone combo. You probably can take out almost everything you see. Uh, Slamu with oof, getting 41 more hit points and heal more uh, now at level 10 or 11. Yeah, the stats are certainly going really fast. Uh, spells, not so much, but heal more helps that a lot. And also gives Slamu a good chance to take out this uh, spike tile if he can not be unlucky in whatever it is. That kill gets 46 agility for Ladab. That's a, not exactly the stat you need, but it's a stat you don't mind having. Oh, I didn't notice that Slamu also has uh, Hurt more, too. I don't know what level that was on, but it won't help him there, though. That Scorpion is going to be an issue. Yeah, yeah, that's not good. That's, uh, oh no, what's really not good is the 3,400 experience to the next level. Well, I take back all I said about the seed being really fast. Okay, yeah, now it's like, find your grind. Find something that works and, and settle in, because you're looking at almost a little over 4,000 to get to the next, to get to level 14. And uh, level 13 is not enough to win the game, so you will need that level. Yeah, thus far we, we've seen a lot of grinding from Slamu and Beta Strap. I'm not sure how much Ladab and uh, Fire Teeth have been doing yet, but they've, they've still got the levels... Uh, relatively close in terms of experience, so they're not too far behind there, even if they're just trying to explore right now. Fry Teeth here getting hurt more, that's a level 10, which means Ladab, Ladab is super close to hurt more as well, and that will just make everyone feel a little better about getting out in the world and finding something with good experience. It looks like he managed to pick it up, but it didn't help too much against the werewolves, which seem to have at least some level of uh, hurt more resistance, so... Could be a bit of an issue going forward for them. Yeah, Fry Teeth here in, uh, in Tablet Cave, checking things out, looking for any of these random chest spots. Without Radiant, you have to do the big long walk to see every spot, which is kind of annoying. See, and it's a total zonk, it looks like. Yeah, it never feels good, especially when you go there without having uh, uh, Radiant, because that means you can't actually see that spot beforehand. Yeah, no outside, so you gotta do the walk out. Uh, no encounters to even help you death warp, if that would be your option. 
Yeah, Ladab getting the super bad news about that scorpion in Hawksness. You're just not willing to go down. Yeah, even worse is I didn't know if Slamu also failed to hurt more, or if he hit it and it just didn't die, but that's not going to be an easy fight, especially now that it has hurt more resistance. Yeah, I think I think no one has landed the hurt more to find out if that's enough. So someone might get persistent enough to go try, but maybe uh, maybe not yet because it's got other good grinds and you know whatever it's holding, you don't need that quite yet, probably. Oh yeah, I didn't see what Beta just killed, but he's found something that's worth just under 300. So that's a really valuable grind wherever he is. I think chat called out a blue dragon. It's 297, and it looks like these mountains have them, so this is going to be Beta Strep's home for a while. I said Ladab finding an enemy worth about 240, so certainly so far at least, killable enemies has not been the problem. It's been the unkillable ones. <laughs> The Droll Magi is 236, so Ladab actually has a pretty good area up here. Two enemies that pay off reasonably well. They're not as good as the Blue Dragon, but when you have two options, it might average out a little better for you. Yeah, and it'll also speed it up a little bit that it's in desert instead of the hills that uh, Beta Strep is on. So that'll help him uh, recover from the slightly lesser experience overall. Here's Fry Teeth picking up level 12, almost to the big experience gap, and also probably feeling pretty good about chances in, in Hawksness. Uh, we'll probably get some bad news here. Of course, you might get that. Just land the first hurt more, kill it, and move on, and not realize that everyone else uh, got turned away in pain. gonna try to sleep. Oh, and he lands it. That's really huge. That's really great knowledge. It said goes for a heal more that is instantly undone by the scorpion's uh, high AP. Oh, the scorpion does not want to stay asleep. So the strategy's right, but the luck was bad. Yeah, but now that he knows that, that could be a huge advantage going forward. Yeah. I mean, Betty Strep, uh, all, you know, all of our runners are sticking with grinds. The Dob has a pretty decent one here. Uh, Betty Strep, of course, has like the best looking one so far. Slamu still hunting a bit for that, for that grind spot. Um, checking things out a lot of different zones. Looks like he just went through the zone that Betty Strep is in, so that's a bit unfortunate for him. Okay, but he does get a blue dragon, so it's about to get the info that this is this is it. Uh, just assume that that's a, that's what Slamu saw. So we'll check in on uh, Fry Teeth going back. Looks like taking another shot at this Hawksness tile here. Yeah, it's definitely. A risky play if it, again, doesn't let him get past it, but if he can take this down and it's got sword under it, then that could be a pretty big advantage. Yeah, anything that resists hurt more, you know, that sword is going to be, would be really huge, especially to get to about 120 strength or attack power. Like, that takes out almost everything that doesn't have extremely high agility in this seed. Oh, and Alab has managed to wander into Cantlin, so that's a big, uh, big potential get as well, <laughs> and a crit. Death Necklace, not so great. Going back for another chance at it. Maybe trying to see if what the HP max is. I think this was also potentially a dead end, so... Might just be a good death warp there. Okay, yeah, it's like kind of that northern path. Yeah. Okay, 
Yeah, you don't, you don't really hate finding the Death Necklace, but it doesn't really help you. There are very few options uh, for using that in a Chaos Seed. You really have to be really risk-averse on the, uh, the Dragon Lord. Could hit you from anywhere between 2 and 102. And the Death Necklace is a little too risky to put on until you have really good info about, about that fight. Oh, that could be really big for both Ladab and Slamu. Cantlin has uh, very affordable gear and also has a pretty countable uh, search spot. But we've also seen West and South has some water, so it might not be a straightforward walk. It's going to be really close. Oh yeah, that could be an issue. But I mean, if it is, this is certainly the flag set you don't mind having a princess hanging around in your inventory, Ron. Yeah, Chad asking a good question. If you put on the death necklace uh, and you have to uncurse, can you get it back? And the answer is no. The uh, the fellow in Breconary will take it away, take the curse away, but the death necklace shatters and has no purpose after that. Yeah, even going back to the chest just gives you a small amount of gold, which can be useful sometimes, but obviously not for replacing the death necklace once you've lost it. So beta strep here, also doing hurt more strats during sleep strats on the, uh, the scorpion. Switches to just swinging. Uh, does have level 14, which gives Radiant and Outside your two exploration cave exploration spells, which really help uh, with these random chest locations to see around corners and across walls. Unfortunately, I think Beta is probably just one swing away from killing it, but he doesn't know that, so... Just trying to manage to get it to stay asleep for more I than know, a turn. Using, using herbs to just get out of one-shot range and saving the heal for, for his... Oh no, it just keeps waking up. <laughs> oh! <laughs> he just gives up, and luckily that was the right play there ended up being... And for that, you get a death necklace. So you know, not a total, uh, not a total whammy, but not what you hope for when you put all that that effort in. Right teeth also in Cantlin, getting more. Uh, you're gonna get the gear here. This, this magic armor in this uh, high end shop is gonna be low end prices and be very nice to pick up. Yeah, hopefully that doesn't come at the cost of the knob, because he had the money to afford it, but he just didn't check that shop, I don't think. We do have the flag, I believe we have the flag, armor is not in Sharlock, so at least you won't have to go digging in Sharlock to find the armor. Uh, so, you know, it kind of makes not having magic armor less of a pain. Yeah, that'll definitely help out. Uh, not too much... I don't think we've seen a single cave beyond uh, that early spotting of uh, Tablet Cave. So, not a lot nearby to explore. Yeah, uh, Ladab has one on screen here, next oh. to Garenham, which is another really good find. Slimu is in another zone. Uh, the Red Slime is a decent fight. Oh, the Droll Madger, right? That's a 236. So that's the zone Slamu settled in. Try to pick up level 14. Looks like we have Freebie under Garenham with two chests. I think that was an herb and a cursed belt, so information, but not anything actually helpful at the moment. Yeah, the NPC was blocking Ladab getting to the inn last time, so just gave up, went in, checked all the uh, stuff, came back out, now can get back to the inn. Sometimes the NPCs uh, change your routing on you. 
Yeah, there's there's no winning move when the NPC gets into that hallway. You just can't play the game. Oh, it looks like Fryteeth found uh, Swamp Cave at some point. I'm not sure if that's the same... I don't think it... Oh, it is, but I think he found it from the different end. So yeah, both Ladab and Fryteeth in Swamp Cave. Uh, oh, there's just two ways to get there. Yeah. Uh, so you can come at that from the south. Ladab came at it from the from the west, and they both found their way to the same spot. Did we see a spike check in Swamp Cave? And did we see the princess uh, chest location? It looked like Fryteeth was checking that, but we'll get the news right here on Ladab's screen. I love the immediate sleep, actually. I think that's a really good strategy. A lot of enemies are weak to that in Chaos. And so you miss, if you just really want to win, you don't want to scout, then throw that first sleep, and then, wow, three hurt more is still not enough. Yeah. You know you know they're not going to be there, well, at least they don't have to be there because they have uh, sleep resistance, because as I recall, that isn't factored into it. But... You do know they're going to be there for something, and in that case, I guess it was the HP. Yeah, Ladab doing the pr Princess Rescue uh, does not have outside, I think, so it has to go back through that, but now we know it's just a long fight and not a scary one. I think we've got some real divergence here. Slamu is really grinding this this zone extremely uh, efficiently. Is already at 7,000 experience um, and level 15, which is still not ghost stats. So you might as well just keep grinding a little more, I guess. Uh, the Star Wyvern uh, seems like Nadab actually got lucky getting the sleep spell off the first time because it has not gone to sleep this time and it also has uh, hurt more. So it's actually a little bit more formidable than it looked the first time around. Oh no! Oh! Use that heal more! Oh no! Oh, that's really unfortunate. Yeah, so Fryteeth is doing some counting, it looks like, um, but finding, looks like, edges of the map. Doesn't look like there's a direct path, which makes the count pretty annoying. Nope, it looks like it was just right there in the end. Shoved into a cubbyhole was Urgic's armor, I believe, so that's absolutely huge for the search spot. What is the search spot? Ooh, okay. Also means that's going to be really unfortunate for Ladab if he's not uh, confident in his counting skills. You know, we haven't... You know, the big thing, the armor. Obviously, it heals you. Uh, obviously, it helps with hurt more. Helps with swamp. But we haven't seen any DL2 breath, right? And that's the main thing that that armor bails you out from, is the surprise DL2. Yeah, there is a fair bit of swamp, and there's also the fact that it's pretty pretty easy to overlook, but it, if with this much swamp, especially in the Garenham area, if you have to go through that area quite a bit, uh, it'll certainly just speed your uh, trip up just from not having the uh, flashing going on on the screen. But there's no huge reward we've seen so far for it beyond just the incidental ones. It's definitely required to win the game. Dragon Lord 2, guaranteed to use quite a lot of, of Dragon Lord 2 breath, hence the name. But this early grind and early exploration, uh, our runners really haven't been sent back. Other than these uh, tough spike fights, uh, the overworld itself has been most pretty chill. Yeah, it's being very kind for uh, the Chaos Seed so far, which obviously means when's the other shoe going to drop, but... For now, at least, I'm sure they're enjoying it beyond the level gaps.
Although I, I looked away and I guess immediately after 15 was 16 because Lemu jumped all the way from 14 to uh, 16 really fast. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much experience it was because those kills were all like 300 at a time, but it certainly wasn't a 3,000 gap like uh, 14 was. We've got Slamu rescuing the princess, and I think we have Fry Teeth also going into the princess uh, area. Yep, Fry Teeth is starting this fight with the Star Wars, which is pretty challenging. You have a lot of strategies. You see Hurt more, so you go Stop Spell. I think that's going to be a really safe play. Yeah, it looks like it wasn't too much trouble getting it off, although obviously it wasn't the first time it got slept either, so... Who knows if he just got lucky there, or if it just got really low resistance. Uh, but either way, that'll definitely help him get through it this time, at least. Yeah, putting the stop spell on, and now defense breaking even the Star Wyvern. Because of the Erdrick's armor, uh, that makes this fight long, but completely safe. And it looks like uh, Token was in Swamp and just wasn't checked until Ladab, uh, until not Ladab, until uh, someone checked it. I'm not sure who. Would it have been Slamu, I would assume? Uh, but that's going to be potentially very huge. I assume it was in like the uh, uh, north. And we've also got stones in uh, Rim, so... Yeah, so that's, uh, that's two things you have to go north of that turn off. Uh, both, I think, I think all three Ladab, Fry Teeth, and Beta Strep turn the corner to go to the spike tile immediately, and no one had finished the walk north. So here's Beta Strep doing that walk. Yeah. Hopefully, remembers to check the chest. That does put Slamu in a really good position right now. He's he's got a solid, obviously not insurmountable, especially in chaos experience lead. Uh, but combine that with the fact that he's got all three trading items, and the princess in hand, and the coordinates, and he's in really good shape right now. Does... yeah, so Slamu does have the coordinates. He's not going to try to count. Maybe just wants the uh, XP info that also comes with, with rescuing the princess. Yeah, it can sometimes be really, really important in chaos. Here's Fry Teeth in Rim, as long as it uh, goes in the, the Rim of Darbar and Grail and checks the free chest there. We'll pick up the stones as well. One thing I don't think we've seen so far, beyond Sherlock itself, I don't think, is I don't know that we've seen any real trade-in caves so far. I think we have Jerk in the basement. Oh yeah, Jerk was in the basement, so that's helpful, but Staff is somewhere still out there, along with Sherlock itself. Yeah, yeah, that we do have those two key locations to find. Slamu, of course, is in the right place to find them. Ladab is finding Mountain, and it's probably the Harp Trade right next to Mountain. So Ladab going to be kind of in a bad news spot where... Oh, oh, actually, everyone has the Harp from the start. That's right. It's the Token and Stones that need to go through Swamp Cave. Could still find Sword in here, which... While not as big when you had an easily acquirable flame sword, uh, could still be a pretty nice advantage to have. Yeah, I've been watching a lot of the races this week, and in retrospect, many of them could have been winnable with a flame sword. Uh, but of course, you really don't want to start throwing a lot of time away without having your best gear, uh, even though the Dragon Lord might be randomly quite easy. Yeah, you never know, but there's also the fact that it's it's nice not having to take that risk. Yep, 
yeah, so far, uh, Ladab not picking up anything awesome here in Mountain. We know the most it could be is a sword, um, but none of these chests yet have given anything that Ladab's happy to see. I mean, you'll always take some fairy water, though, right? I mean, <laughs> sure, why not? You get thirsty on the road. Oh, you're supposed to throw it at things, not drink it? Okay, well, you know, it has its purpose. Either or, but it looks like aside from that, Mountain Cave was a total bust. Yeah, a little bit of a bust. Uh, there were blue dragons in it, so that I've kind of got some experience at least along the way. At least get something for your time. And the fact that staff is here is also a huge advantage. Uh, so we'll have that uh, as a pretty nice consolation prize uh, but right now just oh wow and there's grave oh that could be really bad yeah everyone else who does coordinates first um, well you know you still need the sword I mean you might as well check grave before you have to check Sherlock which is the worst case I know some of our runners this week have been hoping for the have to dive Sherlock up from the basement to get sword, and I don't think I've seen one this week that came to that. Yeah, it's never a fun, fun possibility. Uh, even beyond just the dangers that Chaos Sherlock can present and just the slowness of it, potentially, there's also just the fact that it's not, in my experience, fun going through Sherlock backwards. Yeah, Slamu's doing a lot of overworld searching, which I think when you need two things, you're not too worried about the coordinates, because uh, they can't have two things there. So you got to find at least one of those two. You also know you have to go back home for the jerk, so you are not going to be um, stranded in a really bad overworld position when you have to go home for that anyways. Yeah, it's, it's a risk, obviously. Uh... But you know you need uh, you need staff cave anyway, so yeah. At the yeah, very if you're least, slam oh, good. Yeah, if you're Slamu, your route uh, includes returning home no matter what, and those coordinates are pretty close to home. So it's you're just like let's just find everything, get as much info about the overworld as possible. Uh, find Sherlock. Has anyone seen Sherlock yet? I don't think so. Uh, Slamu did find the fairy flute. Uh, obviously turns that down. And it doesn't look like there are any chests in coal either, so the sword is still outstanding. Yeah, that's right. That coal could have the sneaky last chest uh, with the sword. There's our Sherlock. Slamu has it. Um, maybe this... I don't know if everyone walked by this to get to the other cave zone, so maybe this is actually knowledge... Uh, Ladab and Beta and Fry Teeth already have? I don't know, but I think, I mean, uh, Cole was right there, and I'm pretty sure no one else had gone into Cole yet, so it's likely that Slamu has just found some sort of pocket that nobody else has managed to find yet. This pocket still has blue dragons. Slamu's at level 18, which has really pretty gross stats. At this point, most runners would be pretty happy to stop grinding. Obviously, you're going to take a blue dragon if the game gives it to you, but with that sword, you're going to have 136 attack, which is at least enough to ding any any Dragon Lord 1 that may present. Oh, yeah, and there's the other caves. Oh, he found his way to them in reverse, too, so that's good. Uh, and he'll get the uh, Great Harp trade in here, uh, but sword if he wants it, is not going to be in, as far as we know, any of the caves around here, unless it's in the last chest in the grave. Yeah, Ladab doing the work clearing this out. Um, Bright Teeth finishing off the certain mountain. Gonna have to zip out of there and try yet another search through grave. Looks like Slamu is going into the caves to see if he can find sword. 
Or, for all he knows, armor. Yeah, you notice all the runners going down that one staircase. There could be one chest there, but it also gives you uh, eyes on three other chest locations, which can make your second floor walk a little bit more efficient in mount. So all our runners doing that quick peek, uh, taking in that info, and then making the second floor walk a little bit more straight to where there could be remaining chests. And I think, as Aaron to you too is pointing out, that Sword is now verified to be in Sherlock. So... Uh, that that could be a huge, huge deal. Uh, because 120, I think we're at 126, Slano is. That's not really fun to try. Yeah, and now Slano does have a death necklace. Uh, I think all the runners have a death necklace, so they will all be confronted with, well, I could just put it on, and I'd be at 136. Uh, none of them know the HP gets as high as 159, which is where Slamu is now, but yeah. uh, it's in play. You don't love to do it in chaos, but sometimes the stats present themselves in a way you have to, so it's definitely an option, and who knows, the enemies are... Oh, in fact, speaking of, Slamu has level 19. It's not much of a level. Uh, 1, 1, 7 HP and 1, but hey, every little bit helps, and it makes that decision a little bit more challenging, even. Do you keep grinding or not? Now, Slamu does have the GPS from Rescuing the Princess, can check how far that next level is away, and uh, can see how far 20 is in the future. The one bad thing for Slamu uh, that his decision-making might cost him here is... At this point, it may just be easier to forget the sword and get the levels on absurd enemies that are just fantastic but he doesn't know that the armor is waiting for him back home. Yeah, I mean, he can, he'll can he be able to narrow it down knowing that armor cannot be in Sherlock. Um, so actually, after clearing out Grave here, or, then Slamu should know that it's the armor there and the sword is in Sherlock, and then has to make that call. It looks like the knob is also circled around to find Cole. And thus Sherlock as well. Yes, yeah, so we have a map with a lot of loops. We've seen runners get to a few different places from totally different directions, different order of finding things. None of them particularly consequential. Again, every runner is going to check everything looking for the sword, so order doesn't seem to really help you skip stuff this seed. Yeah, especially not with Jerk back home and uh, uh, Harp so easily found. Uh, speaking of, Beta Strep is turning in uh, the items to get to the rainbow drop. Yeah, so Beta Strep actually, you know, okay, it's doing some grinding. It's maybe thinking about, probably thinking quite heavily about a flame sword dive here. And uh, levels 18 and 19 are very tempting to give it a go. Yeah, uh, it's it's always hard to tell when you're your level in Chaos, uh, but there are so many things that DL1 and DL2 could have that could make them absolute pushovers that uh, sometimes you're disadvantaged to do that. And Slamu with another level, I think he's at 20 now? Yeah, and just the blue dragons are just throwing themselves at, at Slamu in this cave. It's just... <laughs> cannot not get levels. And yet, I think he's only gone up one AP in the last two levels. Oh, Flyteeth going into going into Sherlock already. Yeah, I mean, this is big, right? You you can check potentially eight chests on this floor, even, if you get lucky. And yes, yeah, Lemu not diving grave is going to roll the dice on Sherlock as well, I think. He still doesn't have the armor, so I imagine he'll probably also need to be returning soon. I'm not sure exactly where he's going, but I don't exact the map is so hard to figure out with all the loops where it's exactly someone is in any given point, so. And now I don't think even if Fry Teeth gets a sword that the Dragon Lord fights in play at level 13. But there are so many good grinds on this map. Uh, here we go, we got some chests opening up. Gold. 
herbs and the sword. Okay, that could get Fireteeth back into it. He's still well behind in experience, uh, but he's the only one with everything all checked off. Uh, so if he can get that experience, he's in a good spot. Slammu has maybe gone about eight steps since Fryteeth, the total uh, walk and get of the sword. Got about 2,000 experience on those eight steps, but these levels are, at this point, maybe unnecessary. Yeah, uh, especially especially since we don't know how much... I don't think even he's checked the GPS to see when the next level is, so... Even aside from it being uh, doable, potentially, with a sword level 20, obviously, pretty easily, uh, it, it may just be that the next level is 5k away, and all those kills just are not going to matter at all in the end. Yeah, I don't know what Slim was looking for. I think chat kind of noticing this as well, like, why not just use return, get back to the castle, check your coordinates, trade in for the drop, and then reassess. Um, you know, you don't know if it's sword or armor because you didn't finish clearing grave. Uh, oh, we're getting level 21. Well, that's a good power gain. Uh, Needs sword a lot less, although it won't really help him because it's so easy to get in Charlock. I'm wondering what Thilo Thilo has just pointed out. Did Slamu not go into basement or forget that Jerk was in basement? Yeah, that's kind of what it's looking like here. Uh, because this is a lot of pacing around the overworld and there's nothing left to find. I mean, maybe tablet? No, I, but I don't think that's what you're looking for right now. Yeah, I think in this situation, you just gotta trust the search spot is what you need, even if you haven't found something. Uh, so the only thing I can think of is Jerk would be slowing him down that he doesn't remember, didn't check, and is thus thinking Jerk is somewhere out here in the overworld, which would be unfortunate. Yeah, so here is Beta Strep uh, in Cole, which is very close to Sherlock, has everything except the sword, which we know is in the treasury in Sherlock, and is reloading. Uh, level 17 will have 136 attack with the sword. 13 heal mores. I mean, it's pretty good odds. 90 DP, uh, 143 HP. That's obviously you don't like counting on doubles, but that's a lot of uh, potential for doubles and a lot of insurance in case you get slept or something. Yeah, I mean, Fryteeth could go for it here. Uh, you don't love it, but if you see a finish, you might be really tempted to just take a shot and think that maybe they finished because it was a very easy Dragon Lord. So look to see if Fryteeth abandons the grind uh, at some point and just takes a risky dive. But we'll see. Oh, this is unfortunate for Ladab. He's... Oh, no, wait. Oh, he's realized it. Yes, okay. He's going to get his token right here. Yeah, that's great. And then we just go through the, the stairs and, and we find Rimaldar and the stones. And that kind of completes the set for Ladab. Beta not even checking for the sword. So that could be an issue, but obviously the stats are good enough where as long as DL1 and DL2 aren't bad, uh, he's still got a very good shot at it. Yeah, this, this fight's good. Warlock does some damage, but nothing you can't heal through. Yeah, the only thing you really don't want to see is something like the uh, Scorpion that was on Hawk's Nest. Yeah, and uh, you know, here's the moment of truth. What does DL1 have for us in store today? Oh, defense broken. Yeah, okay. And two swings. So here we go. With this attack power, Beta Strep doing 6 to 13 should get on the order of 16 or 17 attacks. Um, Assuming he stays alive because DL2 has sleep. Okay, actually, that's huge for Beta Strep because that just gives you so many more attacks, especially if it's 50%. Um, if we start to see a lot more sleeps, it could be pretty free. 
Yeah, as, as long as especially at 30%, he's in the free and clear now that he got that stat spell off. Uh, and it looks like it might be. And even if it isn't, 25%, you should still be able to beat most DL2s. Unless you just get... An in oh, I don't want to say it because it's beta. <laughs> Everyone can just think it. But yeah, there is a maximum HP this Dragon Lord can have. And there's a maximum HP this Dragon Lord can have in any race with beta in it. Um, so... Yeah, uh, for those counting at home, this HP, it could go quite high. We'll just have to see. Oh, it looks like Slam... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, Slam Moon figured it out. It's, uh, it's pretty late. It said even with that, he's still in a good position to manage to take second. Uh, even if Beta Strep's fight doesn't go absolutely topsy turvy. Yeah, so Beta Strep still slugging away, still has 10 heal mores left. Um, I think we'll, we'll not lose this short of a miss menu. Uh, Slamu's still collecting experience. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so let's. Uh, Let's follow along because I think Fryteeth is going for it, and I think this could be enough. We know yeah. that the sleep is going to get you a lot of extra turns. And it didn't take Beta that long either. Uh, in fact, uh, get your GGs out for Beta, who is going to win the race. GG to Beta Strip. Managed to get it done with 10 spare humors, so. If you can get into the DL2 fight and get the stop spell off, you're basically free. Yeah, and now Fryteeth is really just going to have to get the stop spell to land before Sleep uh, lands. And because Slamu is going to come in here pretty hot with 170 HP and level 22, but will not be able to make up that time um, unless something goes really wrong for Fryteeth, I think. I will say, I think. I'm, I wonder if Slamu is getting lucky with the encounters, or if he's repelling in here. Uh, well, the Star Ribbons might be answering that right now. Yeah, Fry Teeth through. Uh, actually, Ladab just needs to do a coordinate check, and is going to be pretty close to go level, you know, one short of Fry Teeth who's going for it now. And it sounds like we have Beta Strep here. GG, congrats on the win. Uh, what are your first thoughts on that on that seed? Super grindy. Um, I'm glad I saw the blue dragon as early as I did, and I felt that the obvious choice was just to sit there and wasn't super thrilled about the super trolly scorpion fight and Hoxins for the death necklace, but uh, other than that, it just screamed a uh, seed where I might not need the sword. Yeah, and it was there in the treasury, um, but you didn't need it with how much sleep the dragon lord threw out, and yeah, you were the first to settle on that blue dragon, which I think really helped streamline path to uh, the end of the seed for you. Yeah, it was just a uh, very good exploration luck. I didn't feel like I wasted a lot of time in empty areas. Um, like, I never went east of Hawkins, for example. Didn't go northeast of Sark either. I just went straight east, essentially. And it's just like, like, if I were to look at my map right now, there's not a whole lot there that's just, like, extra. I'm going to interrupt you over there and just say GG to Fry Teeth who got through the Dragon Lord and should be home in second place here. But yeah, that that seed was pretty straightforward. The trolley scorpion uh, got everybody, I think, at least once. And, um, you know, you had the sleep strats, which I think was the right thing to do. Ladab also did that to get through it on the second try. So that was a, it was a really nice, nice play to use this, everything you had to your advantage to get around it. Yeah, it literally took everything. Like, I was down to my... Like, I don't think I had a healer left at the end. Like, I, or I might have had one left or something. But yeah, it was just... 
sleep, wake up, sleep, wake up, sleep, wake up. It's just terrible. Like, I think that fight probably took a couple minutes. Yeah, you had the worst sleep luck of everyone. Shocking. But you didn't have it against the Dragon Lord, which is what sent Slamu back, failed stop spells, and sleep locked. Yeah, I could see that happening. Um, like, I did get the, what was it, back attack sleep on DL2, so I was, I was happy I didn't put on the death necklace against DL1, but, uh, like, that's part of the reason why I didn't. Like, well, I might get ambushed, and if I could sleep on, I could get sent home without even having a chance to throw stop spell, but it all turned out well in the end. The Dob is in Sherlock, but according to the tracker at least, he doesn't have Erdrich's armor, so this could be a really weird DL2 fight if that's the case. And with us here is our second place finisher, Fryteeth. GG, and congrats on a nice finish. Uh, what'd you think of the seed? Uh, pretty straightforward, uh, probably overgrinded there at the end. I'm guessing it probably could have gone a couple levels earlier, given how easy that last fight was, but... Yeah. Went okay otherwise. I feel you on the overgrind grind beat. Oh. But then again, it was like I fought with the flame sword, so I was okay with it in the end. Yeah, I. Oh, we went with the flame sword. Yeah, I found. I took a quick look into Sherlock early and found the sword. Man, did we have anything we wanted to ask our runners about? You know, these KSCs go so fast, sometimes you forget what happened at the beginning. I think... I think most of the questions have been asked of, uh... them, although... The one thing I would ask is, uh, did anyone in the race... Uh, did either one of you in the race actually notice how, uh, loopy and interconnected the map was. I saw the connection by Sharlock, but, uh, like, I have literally no idea what was north or east of start, but I saw that little loop at Sharlock where it connected. I say the place I noticed it was with the armor. I got the coordinates and realized I was probably pretty close by and was lucky that you could see the castle back across the water, so it was a Really, really easy count there. Yeah, it was on the last tile of land, so we weren't sure where that coordinate would land get you in the when we first saw it, because we knew there was water in that direction. Uh, but yeah, you did a great job of kind of just finding the way to to, to get there quickly. And uh, Slamu finished, got the stop spell land, survived that dragon lord, and uh, finished here in third place. Ladab here is finishing up. Uh, it's gonna, I think, call it in the race room here. Uh, really just that spike tile and swamp that stole the princess back. Uh, I think looking for Ladab the here is finishing up. Ladab just, uh, gonna, that death was super think, unlucky. Call it and in the race the room time. here. Uh, really just that spike tile and swamp. Yeah, especially since it stole the princess potentially back. cost them the chance at getting uh, the, uh, looking for the armor was uh, where quick Adab check just, of the other side of the swamp death was super and the chest in swamp, the wrong which time. all very important. Yeah, especially okay, since and it we're joined potentially cost them with the chance Adab and Big Slamu. Uh, GG's to uh, both of you. Quick check uh, of the other side of swamp and the final Adab, chest Adab, how, how is the search sure. for armor? All I think that is what got you here at the end. Just trying to find it. Okay, and we're joined yeah, I with Ladab and point. Big Slamu. Uh, GG's yeah, to both I of you. Um, how, how is the search for armor? I think that was what <laughs> so got you here at the I end. Worried. Just like, trying to find it. It just went out of my mind. For... Yeah, I know it's at some and, uh, point. It was the last item, right? Uh, first I, I forgot completely that you felt it to get food damage. I don't bring a lot of true breath, right? 
So, so that's yeah, why I yeah, went for it. Like, was on the just, coordinates just in the end, and the, you know, you had the princess at one point, but that's why it was very item, tough. Right? I found it. Took it back from you, and then, of course, you just give up on it. Hope something else gives you the, the armor, and yeah, yeah, find and all this other stuff. Was on the coordinates totally in the end. Yeah, I lost a lot of time. Like I spelunked a lot to use less. Like, yeah, what could go south went south. Except for myself, I should have gone south sooner and got the armor. <laughs> and Slamu, uh, I think your level twenty-two was pretty safe. But how did that seed go for you? I mean, that grind was just so free that I just figured I'd sit on it, and then I didn't expect to need to explore that long. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, clearly it wasn't a good enough level, though, because I died the first time of the Dragon Lord, so. Yeah, I mean, the, the at some point you were level 21, and I think you took about eight steps and got, like, five blue dragons, uh, like, in a row. And you're just, like, they're just throwing experience at you when you really probably didn't want it anymore. Yeah, and it's one of those, like, I could have thrown it, and eventually I finally did, but... I don't know, it's just like the odds of a bad DL1 or 2 or Spike. And I mean, the stats weren't great at 16 or 18. I mean, they were good, but they weren't like horrible Dragon Lord good. So I figured while I still had things to be at a chunk. Yeah, it's always hard to turn down easy experiencing chaos. Uh, just a shame. Well, not a shame, obviously, for the racers. I'm sure you all enjoyed it, but... Uh, just a sh shame for you that uh, it ended up being such an easy deal to, to fight if you could get the slot spot off. Yeah, what was that resist? Because I feel like I failed five times. Ooh. It was on the easier end, even. Five five of 16 resist. Um, so, yeah. the It was almost a one in three to get it uh, fail like that, and you failed it a lot, so... Whatever good luck befell you in the seed, it, it didn't last for that stop spell. And nearly minimum HP. I think I hit him for a little or something. Yeah, it took me one heal more to beat that, so... <laughs> I almost hit it on zero. Yeah, I mean, other than the, other than the scorpion, we don't have a lot to ask you about. It was a pretty easy, easy seed in terms of overworld deaths. I think Ladab got encounter one scorpion encounter on the overworld, which had the DL two, but otherwise, you all pretty much could walk the overworld very safely. Only the spike tiles gave you any uh, pushback. Yeah, but even that scorpion wasn't bad if, you, if it would stay asleep. I had no sleep resist, so as we're seeing on the on the tracker, you, you can't you can't fail it, but it you can wake right back up. Um, yeah, so I think uh, I'll let any runner throw out some last thoughts, but then you know we also are going to reveal the groups for week four. Uh, so if you're anxious to do that. Um, then just uh, let us know you want to see the groups too, and we'll get to that. Yeah, well, thank, I guess thanks. Um, thanks for the group for figuring out a time that worked for everybody. It was obviously a bunch of different time zones, so made it work. Um, it's always fun. So thanks, guys, and looking forward to next week. Yeah, GG's to everyone. Uh, you know, thanks for the you know the restream and the comms and the tracking, and you know, good luck next week. I'm gonna jump out here. Thanks for the race, everybody. And thanks to the, thanks to my fellow volunteers. That race was surprisingly enjoyable for chaos. Yeah. So, all right. Stay tuned, everybody. We should be getting the uh, current standings updated with this race up on screen and then the group four random groups that have nothing to do with the standings so you have no idea what you're going to see but that's how dragon warrior randomizer works right
Okay, we're just making sure it's fully updated with this race, but I think we're good to go. And should be switching over here in just a sec. Oh, I think I have to switch my screen too. After week three, Diabetes is second with three wins out of three races. Almost a guarantee for the playoffs already uh, in first place. Bob Pineapple, two wins and a second and 13 points. Beta Strep with today's win jumps all the way to second or third place with 12. And uh, then we start to have the big groups. Uh, Angel, DK, Fry Teeth, Nim, and Ziggy all at 11. Centroid, Slamu, Tilo Tilo, Venicus at 10. The Dob having a win last week. Still uh, in really good position here with nine points. Guelph, Dr. Mr. Holmes, and Jay Coper uh, round out the top half of the bracket. Everyone here, very good very good odds of getting in. Uh, maybe don't even need a win. Two seconds might squeak you in. Uh, Joof and Edge also in the nine-point group. Scarlet Shadow, we had a, we had a tie, so we are um, in the tiebreaker races, so 8.5. And then... Uh, the rest of the group here is definitely in need to win maybe twice territory. So Yeah, with the cutoff being potentially at 14 or 15, uh, a single win could do it, but you're kind of leaving your fate in other people's hands if uh, you don't get two wins. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, so the rest of the standings here, I won't read off all the names because we're going right to the groups. And yeah, man, you're in the tournament here. Uh, or sorry, you are not. You are you are in this. Yeah, where are you here? You're at seven points. So you've got two wins ahead of you. Why don't you take us through the groups? Okay, so in group one, we have Oog, Ladab, Angel FM, and Dr. Mr. Holmes. Uh a lot of potential in that group, definitely. Uh, that could be a wild one, especially in Vanilla-ish. Uh, then we have High Spirits, Beta Strep, Tristle MTG, and Jay Coper in Group 2. Uh, also a really star- like, I mean, to be fair, the entire tournament cat, uh, group is really just star-studded at this point. I think there's a lot of great racers in it. Uh, but that's Group 2. Uh, then in group th three, we have Thilo Thilo, Aaron Two Two, Ratlet the Rat, and Joof. And in group four, we have Vinicus, Beef, Beef Supreme TV, Ziggy, and Edge. Uh, in group five, we have the Sea Wolf One, uh, Sandcraft of Five, Bob Pineapple MD, and Sassid Link. In group six, we have RG365, Scarlet Shadow, Yakko Wacko 20, and Jbrun TR. Uh, oh boy. In group seven, we have Raigai 3745, three, ah, Karant, Big Slamu, and myself, unfortunately. Uh, group eight, we have Hate, uh, Diabetes the Second. Uh, Zarnax 42, <laughs> uh, Fry Teeth. In group 9, we have Centroid, Silly Dabbit, Stags 28, and Nimenva. And in the final group, we have Monster Slime, DK9146, uh, Guelph 35, and Cyberdark 86. Uh, so, yeah, that's. There's a lot of spreading out of some of the top names it feels like angels in yeah. a group uh bob pineapples in a group uh 
So there's going to be a lot of hard-fought uh, groups, but not a lot of... Oh, I'm glad I'm not in group one. We have two Winter League winners, right, in that group. And so uh, Oog and Ladab have probably a little bit of a of an uphill battle, but uh, it's also vanilla -ish, so you know a lot about the seed before you start. Yeah, and especially that could uh, benefit Ladab as well. Uh, because his background, as I recall, in uh, speed uh, yeah, speedrunning uh, the vanilla game on Switch. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, these are these are some you know some random groups. People are always uh, unhappy with their choice because there's so many good runners. Uh, randomness never gives you the, the the free the free win that you you so hope for in a tournament like this uh because there's there's no way to avoid a lot of good runners and uh yeah but i'm looking forward to week four it's actually personally the one i like the least um because i feel like there's there's less on the fly decision making you know so much going in but it really feels like a speed run um because you know so many things about what you have to do to finish the race and you know, your mind can be very focused on on dealing with just a little bit of randomness sprinkled in. Yeah, it's really a seed where, uh, a flag set where uh, you just have to know, know a lot of your bases and have them covered in terms of uh, where the zone boundaries are, uh, what you want to explore, what you don't want to explore, uh, and various things like that, and having a good system for the count as well. So... Yeah, and when to go to second continent. There's not much there, but you know, at some point you gotta make that trek. And so I think everyone has a different different calculation of when it's worth it to pop over to second continent when they find swamp or keep kind of clearing the continent they're on. So it's a it's a pretty interesting set of decisions. And runners uh, can definitely really practice this. You can't really practice week three that we just saw. Too much is totally, totally different every time you play. But this one I think you can really practice and really get a good feel for how the race might go yeah it's definitely the one where i feel like practice is going to be the most helpful in terms of just knowing things and having a system in place for everything all right everybody uh thanks uh for coming i think this is our our, our sign to wrap things up people have been staring at the groups and even chat is probably strategizing about what to do this week so uh, i'll say thank you and then mandy can take us out so thanks to our our runners of course uh ladab fry teeth big slamu and beta strep good race today and thanks to our crew flower power restreaming shahali and rg365 doing uh, the tracking being on top of everything during a fast seed like this and then man thanks for doing comps with me it's been great yeah thank you uh to everyone as well and thank you also to brian williams for uh likewise doing commentary with me uh it's been a very fun chaos race uh they don't always happen that way uh not sure if we're having a raid or not looks like we're raiding rpg limit break Yeah, so stick with us. They are doing a SMT3 uh, playthrough, it looks like, and uh, having a marathon. So go say hi, RPG Limit Break. Our friends there host many of our races, so it's always good to stop in and see what they're up to. And just the tournament overall has been enjoyed. Certainly has been on this side. Okay, and with that, the raid's going to take effect. So thanks everyone again. We'll see you next week for week four.